Let's now proceed to differential diagnosis in Western and Chinese medicine, and let's discuss bleedings, specifically hemoptysis and blood stool. Let's start with the Western differentiation of bleeding in hemoptysis and blood in the stools. This condition can be caused by, or if coughing of blood in hemoptysis, and this can be due to a pulmonary infection. And this is further differentiated into three, bronchitis, bronchiectasis, and pneumonia. In bronchitis, there's hemoptysis with cough, yellow-green sputum, uh, shortness of breath, wheezing, fatigue, fever, and chest discomfort. In bronchiectasis, there is hemoptysis with cough, pulse, melon, sputum, shortness of breath, weight, weight loss, fatigue, wheezing, pallor, and bad breath. In pneumonia, there is hemoptysis, cough with green, yellow sputum, chills, fever, sharp or stabbing chest pain, which is worse for deep breathing and coughing. And there is rapid shallow breathing and shortness of breath. Other causes include lung cancer, tuberculosis, pulmonary embolism, cystic fibrosis, gingivitis, nosebleed, and tonsillectomy. Next, we go to blood in stools. And blood in stools could stem from the upper gastrointestinal tract or from the lower GI tract. In, uh, if it stems from the upper GI tract, it could be due to duodenal ulcer, where there is blood in stools, heartburn, belching, chest pain, and vomiting blood. It can also be due to gastritis, where there is dark stools, abdominal pain, indigestion, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, or blood, or coffee ground vomit. Other causes include esophageal viruses, bowel ischemia, vascular malformation. If uh, blood in the stool stems from the lower GI tract, it can be due to hemorrhoids, where there is fresh blood on toilet tissue, anal itching, anal ache or pain, pain during bowel movement, hard tender anal lumps. It can be also due to anal seizures, where there is blood on stool, Pain during bowel movement, visible skin crack when anus stretched slightly, and constipation. Other causes include diverticulitis, inflammatory bowel disease, intestinal infection, colon cancer, bowel ischemia, vascular malformation. Now let's proceed to Chinese differentiation. So in Chinese differentiation, um, we look into first the organ interrelationship. Organs involved here are the liver and the lungs. This is uh, the cool cycle. And the stomach and large intestines, these are the yang ming organs. Next, we go to the pathology of bleeding. If it's qi deficiency, it means uh, deficient spleen qi, failing to manage blood or center chi falling causes recklessly, causes pale, watery bleeding from lower orifices and hemorrhoids. Uh, if it's due to heat, it could lead to, it could mean heat of the blood aspect moving recklessly, profuse, bright blood. If it is due to empty heat, there will be scanty bleeding. And if it's due to blood stasis, there will be bleeding dark clotted with pain. Now we look into, next we look into color of blood in stools. Uh, if the stools are black and tarry, it can be problem from the stomach or duodenum. If the stools are purple and dark, it could mean the problem comes from the large and small intestines. And if the stools are bright colored, it, it could mean a problem from the anus or the rectum. Next, we go into the principles of treatment. So here we harmonize the blood, and this includes stopping bleeding, moving blood stasis, cooling blood, clearing heat, and nourishing blood. And next, we treat the root, we treat the root cause. Uh, we cool heat for the empty patterns to supplement qi in deficiency. We move blood in stasis. We want the yang in yang deficiency. We treat qi in qi 
that deficiency, we supplement qi, subdue rebellious qi, or raise qi in true thinking. Next, we go to etiology. External pathogenic factors like wind heat, external damp heat, and also dietary factors, uh, which includes too much alcohol, hot, greasy, or their food, and also emotional stress, which includes excessive prolonged anger, resentment, frustration, which produces stagnation of chi and often leading to fire. And it could also be due to physical or mental overexertion, which depletes spleen and kidney chi, or can be due to chronic illness, uh, childbirth, which uh, causes chi deficiency. Next, we look into the Zangfu organ patterns. If coughing blood is an excess condition, it uh, indicates liver fire and salting the lung. If it's deficiency, it's lung in deficiency with empty heat. In blood and stools, if it's excess, it could be damp heat in the large intestine and also blood stasis. And if it's a deficiency condition, uh, it indicates stomach spleen chi deficiency or center chi falling. Thank you for your attention.